All right, somebody give God a hand clap of praise right there. Listen to everybody watching, please, please excuse what I got on. Uh, this week is Stella Week, man, Stella Week, and we're preparing for the Stella Awards. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love Nashville. Have you ever been to Nashville? Uh, Nashville is cold-blooded. That's where the Stellas are being held. Uh, so we just got this ballroom because I want to make it very clear. Every door that God opens, this is enough to praise God. I release an ambidextrous anointing over everybody watching right now. That means God is blessing you to be skilled. Watch this. In both hands. Look at somebody and say both hands. I want you saved in the right hand, paid in the left hand, anointed in the right hand, intellectual in the left hand. Look at somebody and shout, I'm saved and paid. Tell them I'm blessed in both hands. I'm anointed enough to pray until the glory falls, but smart enough to have a business blow up. Somebody shout, I'm blessed in both hands. So while preparing for the Stellas, and you see the footage right there, man, we're here preparing for the Stellas, working really, really hard. And shout out to my family that came all the way from Charlotte to help me, man. You see them right there. That's AP. That's Tom's. That's Adia. They came from Charlotte. Y'all see the home team right there, Terrell and Steve and Amanda and Wateria. We've been working really, really hard. And I told them, let's stop for a second because I wanted the church to see that even though God is opening all of these doors, I am still committed to what God has called us to do here at Rock City. So I want to give you a word. So do me a favor. Don't judge my shorts. Zoom all the way out. Let them see what past the knees look like. It's the knees for me in Jesus' name. It's the knees for me. So do me a favor. Go ahead and get all your jokes out. Whoever going to watch. Lord have mercy. He's praying with the knees out. Hear me. Whatever it takes to get your word, that's what I'm willing to do. And I'm excited about it. So Rock City U, we're in a series entitled Rock City U Presents BU. So if we're sticking with Rock City U, we can just call this a field trip. Yeah. A field trip. So I want to do this. I want you to put this at the top of your notes. Allergic to average. Yeah. Allergic to average. Let's go to First Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. 1 Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brother's. And his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I bore him with pain. Now, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me. See, had I been in church on a Sunday morning, that would tell the whole church up, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge. Can I go old school? <laughs> my territory. Keep your hand on me. Keep me from harm. I want to teach today I'm allergic to average. Uh, there is a colloquialism or an everyday term when it means to be allergic. It simply means, and it's right there on your screen, to be allergic is to develop a strong dislike for something for two reasons. Because you don't like it, one, or because it's harmful. So let's deal with the first word of the day's lesson is allergic. It is to develop a strong dislike for something because one, you simply don't like it or two, it is harmful. I don't know about you. My son Mason loves football and because he loves football every year around football time, we have to make sure he gets all of his allergy mes medicine and we have to take him to get shots. You finna laugh when I say this because as much as Mason loves football, he is allergic to the sun and he's allergic to grass. So literally this morning, uh, when I looked at him and kissed him, literally his eyes were so old and shut. So we have to give him Benadryl at night. And I'm like, doctor, what can we do? The doctor said, there's nothing you can do but treat it because he was born with an allergy. So I want to ask a question right now. What allergies have you developed? That's crazy, ain't it? What allergies have you developed? I want to list an allergy that I've developed that I pray seven of you can type in the comments, Pastor, I receive. I am allergic to being average. No, being average is something you should not like, but it is also something that is dangerous. So, so this, this, this is a clapback or a pushback. I want to be somewhat of an apologist. An apologist. Don't be afraid of that. That's just a $2 word. Apologist, apology, apologetics, defender. I want to be a defender of those of you who say, well, it ain't about being great. No, my friend. It is dangerous to be average. Why? Number one, put this in your notes. It means you are leaving talent and potential unused. To be average means you are leaving talent 
and potential unused. Hang around me long enough, something in you is going to get stirred up. You want to know why? I believe one of the anointings on my life is to ignite that which is being unused. That was crazy. I believe the anointing on my life is to ignite that which is being unused. Put this on your notes. Underused or misused. Not used, underused or misused. Those are three categories. Dre, do me a favor. Do me a favor, Dre. Let's let's do three categories. Let's say unused right here, misused or not used. No, I said the same thing. Unused, misused, or underused. There it is, Dre. And that's important because some of you fall in this category where it's not being used. So do me a favor. While you're at home, I want you to begin to list some things that you're not using. So I always preach from a very transparent position. I I believe you shouldn't preach to people. You should preach through yourself. The word should cut coming in and going out. So for me, and and it's so apropos that we're here preparing for the Stellars, singing music for me was being unused. Uh Unused. So I had to ask myself a question because the culture suggested if you're going to pastor, pastor. Or the culture will put you in a box that say you have to be this. When I'm speaking over those who follow me, we can be this. Who hear me preaching today. And that. So to be average means something is being unused, misused, or underused, or potential is not being tapped into. I never forget growing up and shout out to one of the living legends in the city of Birmingham, Dr. T.L. Lewis. I never forget we're riding in the backseat of his car. He picked us up and he was letting us hang with him. And I never forget we passed by Elmwood Cemetery. And we, he said to me, Mike, I said, yes, sir. He said, how many folk you think out there dead? You know how Baptist preachers talk. How many folk you think out there dead? I said, it got to be like five, I'm, I'm a young kid, 500 million thousand. And he said, nope. So then my cousin, the other cousin said, it got to be 100 billion. He said, nope. Then my brother said, it got to be 200. Nope. I said, how many? He said, all of them. <laughs> and it made me sleep. He said, I want to make something important to you. I never forget this. He said, it ain't about the number at the beginning. It ain't about the number at the end. It's about the potential. Hear me when I say that. And what I'm discovering is the cemetery is full of people who died with wasted potential. The cemetery is full of people who died not tapping into the greatness that God placed on the inside of them. And three of y'all sitting in here and watching me online need to make a declaration over your life. I'm going to die empty. Look at somebody close to you and shout, die empty, die empty. That as long as there's breath in my body, God going to get all that is in me. I have too much in me to be average. It is average to live a life without purpose. Number one, it is average. Average means, why is it dangerous? I'm leaving talent and potential unused. But number two, average also means that you are not living a life in purpose. Not living a life in purpose. And Rock City University, after today, I pray that you begin to have an allergic reaction to average. Yeah. Yeah. An allergic reaction to average. I'm going to say something. You just shout, tap, fire signs, hands up if I get to you. I am alerted to average relationships. Either we're going to be great or let me just be by myself. Yeah. I am allergic to average faith. See, did nobody say nothing right there? How do you know you got big faith? It's when you're talking to people and they looking at you like you know how much money I know you got, right? Have you ever been talking about your dream to somebody who know you know you and you talking to them about what God about to do and they kind of looking at you like, I know you broke, right? But they don't realize my God shall supply not just some of my needs, but all of my needs. Somebody say big faith. I am allergic to average bank accounts. So don't nobody want to say amen right there with your broke self. I am allergic to average bank accounts. I'm going to speak this only. Seven people going to catch it. Lord, give me a couple commas and a couple zeros. Because God knows if he ever blessed me with some money, it ain't just about what I'm going to do. Everything connected to me. 
going to be blessed. As a matter of fact, I'm giving you 30 seconds right here. If you know if God ever gave you some resources and everybody around you going to be blessed, you ought to shout, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. Because if God see the, the problem, I believe, is that so many people with bad hearts got stuff. I'm ready for the people with favor and finances to collide. This is crazy. So I am speaking by faith that you have an allergic reaction. Yeah. When, when my son's allergies go crazy, his eyes swell. When my allergies go crazy, ah, ah, don't look at me like no, none of y'all do. Ah, who got that problem, right? Ah, you, you can feel it. And it's like you want to put your finger all the way right there because ah, you want to scratch it. So I've discovered that allergic reactions happen in certain areas. Okay. My son's allergic reaction happens to his vision. I'm sorry. His eyes. My, my son's allergic reaction happens to his eyes. Eyes represent what? Vision. Many of you don't have vision because you keep having allergic reactions to stuff that God never called you to. It's hard to have vision when you are stuck in average. So what the devil does is he places you in an average situation because he knows if I place you in an average situation, my God is great. God, God never uses the word average. Even when something isn't great, he put emphasis on how the small can turn into great. He says you can have faith the size of a mustard seed, but then you can tell with that little bit mountain to move. He says even when you get little, little with me is still better than average with them. Did you catch what I just said? So average causes allergic reactions. With my son, it, Im it impacts his vision. With me, it impacts my voice. Put, put this in your notes. So, so, so allergic reactions tap eyes, vision, voice, skin. So, so let's, let's put this sermon together on the spot, okay? So eyes equal vision. Voice equal authority. Skin equals public. Okay? So, so if I get an allergic reaction on my skin, face, I now have a public problem. I now have a public problem. To an in no, I have public evidence to an internal problem. Did you catch that? So, so, so who knows how your skin bump up, your hands bump up. Now, everybody can look and tell, watch this, something's wrong. And I wonder who right now is going through some public examples or some things in your life where the average areas in your life are starting to show. I was watching Ray. I was watching Ray. That's one of my favorite movies, right? I'm watching Ray, and Ray on the keyboard, baby, ah, baby, now. Nah. He's just singing. Then you can tell now he's blind. Watch this. He's blind. So in his mind, he's coping with his addiction. But he doesn't have a clue that everybody around him can see publicly. This thing got him. Did you catch that? And I wonder how many of us are blind to our foolishness, blind to our mistakes, blind to our attitudes, blind to our blind spots. So now the people around you like, you know, I see that, right? It's an allergic reaction. But not, last but not least, not only do I have allergic reactions to average relationships, average faith, average bank accounts. Here's the most dangerous. Please put this in your notes if you love me, if you honor me. Average mindsets. That's the most dangerous one of them all. I, I want you to write down, screenshot, or record me when I say this. Tag me at Pastor Mike Jr. I want you to write it down, record me, or get ready. Matter of fact, five seconds, get your phone ready. I want you to tag me. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's the big idea of the day. You can't be a big person with a small mind. You can't be a big person with a small mind. Repeat after me. You ready? In order to become the new me... I must pursue a new mind. That's credible. In order to become the new me, I must pursue a new mind. I, I, I can't stand seeing people who say, I'm changing, but they change clothes. You ever seen somebody say, no, it's a new me, but the only thing they change is their outfit or they change their hair. You will, spend the, you will spend the majority of your life fixing something that doesn't even cause real change. Yeah. Hair, clothes, weight, look, friends. When in actuality, it's only one thing you can change that'll flip everything, and it is your mind. Yeah. Change your mind. Your mind will change your heart. Your heart will change your body. 
It starts with your mind. This is why Philippians 2 and 5, Paul, that talented tent maker from Tarsus who tentilates us with tough theology, Paul teaches us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Why is that so important, PMJ? Because he's teaching us that in order to accomplish the mission of Jesus, you must adopt the mind of Jesus. In order to accomplish the mission of Jesus, you must adopt the mind of Jesus. That's cold-blooded. In order to accomplish his mission, you need his mind. I, I thank you so much for coming, JT. You got your own business and you still come here and serve. I thank you so much, Tony, who work all day. Then you get behind that camera and you serve. Thank you, Perio, for all you do at the school and helping my boys during this pandemic. Yet you lead the boys and come right here and serve. Thank you, Daryl, for all that you do. Thank you, Dre, for all that you do. What I'm discovering, though, if you're going to work for me, it is impossible to accomplish my mission and not have my mind. Hear me when I say that. This is why most of your relationships fail. Because when you get in a relationship, ship denotes travel. And we're traveling in relation. So so direction. I told you last week, path is direction. Pace is speed. Put that back in your notes. Path is direction. Pace is speed. So, so So the worst thing you can do when your mind is not right is to go somewhere, nowhere fast. So what happens is relation, let's break the word down, Dre. They, everybody been inboxing me saying they love when we play with the screen. So let's do it, Dre, okay? So let's do this, right? Re- relationship, relationship, okay? All right, that's too pretty. E- erase it. All right, block it for me. Relationship. There it is. All right, relationship, all right? So problems with relationship is, okay, number one, if I put a line right behind that L, boom, ain't none of them real. To start, to start about, all right? All right, so, so, so what I'm discovering now is that if I'm going to be in relationship, we must first be real, real. Pastor Mike, that ain't even much how you spare relationship, but you get what I'm trying to say. You get what I'm trying to say, because when I look at words, I play games like wordsmith. So do me a favor, write relationship, all right? So you spell relationship, what? R-E-L. So stop right there. So when I see real, I, I see a triple entendre. All right, I see real, R-E-A-L. It has to be real. Socially, I see R-E-E-L. So real, I have to be transparent about who I am. Real, give me enough to play in my mind in the bad times. So think about this. I'm understanding relation, put the S right there, boom, ships. Ships denotes transportation. So this means we are in relation. We are in agreement on where we're going. Relationship, we are in agreement with where we're going, which means if we're in agreement with where we're going, every relationship should have a mission statement. If your relationship does not have a mission statement, there is no address in the GPS. So what I'm realizing now is I have to put my mission in my relationship because once we properly define the mission, then I can discern if you got the mind. Because I cannot accomplish the mission of Jesus without the mind of Jesus. And what if the reason your last relationship didn't work was not that he didn't like you and y'all weren't the right fit? Their mind was not compatible. I'm 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 going to leave that alone. Hear me when I say this. Wherever God is taking you, the new you, you must get there. Please put this in your notes. Head first. Wherever God is taking you, you got to get there head first. If you get your mind out, you can get your life out. If you get your mind out, you can get your money out. If you get your mind out, you can get your family out. If you get your mind out, you can get your weight down. See, everything is mental. Everything is mental. But we live in a culture where we want to do things quick. I call it cosmetic Christianity. We want to put makeup on messes. We, we, we want to fake it instead of really getting our mind right. So, so I can go have surgery and drop weight, but the weight comes back because the surgery was a quick fix. But it was only a quick fix because they were assuming I was going to change my mind so if you don't change your mind you come out but you only go right back in a cycle is the proof that you're moving but your mind has not shifted somebody shall come out head first 
I can give you a million dollars, you'll be broke tomorrow if your mind don't shift. You give me $10 with a good mind and come holler at me in six weeks and I'll flip that $10 and eat off it for the rest of my life because when you get your mind right, everything else has to come out. Look at somebody and say, pray for me. I'm coming out head first. Jesus. You sat next to the wrong person. I need seven people to type. I'm coming out head first. I'm coming out head first. God, before you flip my money, before you flip my career, before you flip my life, change my mind. Because if I change my mind, everything else in me would change. Uh Uh-oh. If God, what if I told you, you've been asking God to change this. When if you said God changed my mind, I would have the potential and power to change this. I'm coming out ahead. All my sisters give me a what? What? Whenever you have a baby, that baby comes out head first. Now, when the baby comes out feet first, that's called a breach. That's called a breach. When you break a contract, they call that contract a breach. Which means you were supposed to do one thing, but you went antithetical to the covenant. So every time you don't come out head first, God considers that a breach. So it's hard to be blessed when I got so many breaches on my resume. Michael, this is why I'm trying to get you to come out mine first. Look at somebody and shout head first. So what's the important PMJ, Pastor Mike? Why do I need to come out head first? I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Why do I need to come out head first? Why do I need to come out head first? It's so cold-blooded. Because cause, cause, cause when you come out head first, all right, all right, help me, ladies. All right, when it's time to give birth, the placenta does what? It comes out, all right? The placenta comes out. I got single sisters. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hey, 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 come, thank you. come on, mamas, help me. The placenta, oh, oh, Lord. All the single sisters like, no, you didn't tell me. Y'all just want to have sex. Y'all didn't have no idea about what was going to happen when you had a baby, okay? So the placenta comes out. Here's the problem. The way the baby has been breathing in his mother's stomach is through the placenta. The oxygen gets to the baby from the mother through the placenta. When she gets ready to give birth and the canal opens and the placenta exit, the baby is now struggling for oxygen. So if he comes out feet first, there's a potential he can suffocate. So he has to come out head first so he can breathe. And many of you are struggling, here it is, because feet don't breathe. I can't come out feet first because feet don't breathe. How do I know I came out that relationship feet first because I'm still just as broke as I was? How do I know my money didn't come out because I'm just in the same position that I was? I don't need to come out feet first. That's the problem with the church because everybody's trying to step into a new season. Step into a new season. I'm getting ready to think myself into a new season. I'm coming out head. Somebody shout, I receive that. It's critical. Somebody shout, I'm coming out head first. I need a thousand folk to just type, my mind is free. My mind is free. I come against every distraction. I come against all doubt. I come against double-mindedness. I come against the pain of your past. I come against the fears of your future. That he who has begun a good work shall perfect it until the day that he comes in your ladder. Mm. Shall be greater than the path that whatever the devil did to you in your past. I decree and declare that that nefarious nemesis known as the devil who tried with all of his might to thwart your thinking and insinuate your faith. God then you come out head first. Somebody shout, I'm coming out head first. I feel God in here. I'm coming out. Hear me. Head first. There, there, there. Hey, Hey, come here, come here, come here. Pay attention, pay attention. There, There was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 long years. Watch this. And she thought to herself, if I can touch the hem, how did she get healed? She didn't just get healed because she touched Jesus. She got healed because she went to Jesus. 
And I need you to catch this. For many of you, your pain is the reason you keep moving first with your feet. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? If I get on a diving board and I jump in some water, what's the proper way to jump? Head first. If I'm on the 10th floor of a building and I got to jump out, how am I jumping out? Feet first. Feet. Head. Head denotes safety. Feet denotes fear. Head denotes there's somebody to catch me. The baby comes out head first. You want to know why? Because there's a hand on the head. All right. All right. You go into the water head first because you know the water can't hurt you. But if you're up high, you go feet first because you're saying subconsciously, I'm going to catch me. And many of us are walking around with broken legs in the spirit, broken legs emotionally, broken legs spiritually because we keep jumping thinking we can catch us. Lean not. Y'all going to make me have church to my. And the pain is getting you to a place where you're moving feet first instead of head first. Can I ask you something about pain? Is your life, in your life, has pain been a tool or a trap? That's crazy. In your life, has pain been a tool or a trap? Or or in other words, I want to say it like this. Is pain pushing you or has it paralyzed you? Is it pushing you or is it paralyzing? So do do you use pain or does pain use you? Oh, my God. I, I want to make sure we understand the importance of a prayer life because I want to teach you that maybe our prayer life needs a reset to match our new mindset. Prayer is the key to transformation and at transforming an average life into an abundant life. Prayer is the key that transforms an average life into the abundant life. In other words, your life may be average because you don't pray. Wow. That many of us have allowed pain to pull us down into average. That's critical. Dr. Sam Chan said, and I love this, he says, reluctance to face pain is your greatest limitation. Reluctance to face pain is your greatest limitation. There is, please put this in your notes. Are you watching me? Put this in your notes. No growth without change. No change without loss. No loss without pain. Therefore, growth is painful. Can I say that again? Dr. Sam Chan states, reluctance to face pain is your greatest limitation. Look at this. There is no growth without change. Okay, Dre, I want to do it like this, okay? All right, so put, put, put the quote at the top. Can you do that for me? Quote, okay, so here it is. There is no growth without change, okay? Take that change, pull it down to the bottom. There is no change without loss, okay? Now take that loss, bring it down. No loss without pain. All right, so do me a favor, Dre. Look at pain. Draw a line all the way back to no growth. So pain is growth. Did you catch what I just said? Bottom line, this is heavy. If you're not hurting, you're not growing. Jesus. If you're not hurting, you're not growing. When you interpret your pain as bigger than your vision, you'll lower your vision down to the level of your pain. When you interpret your pain as bigger than your vision, you'll lower your vision down to the level of your pain. Who, who's ever gotten upset, hurt, offended, and then you just shut down? That's me. I, but, but what I've been doing lately is I've been pushing through it. Immediately apologize. I'm sorry. I lost it. Lost it today. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's a lot of pressure. I'm not making an excuse. I should be better. You know, I'm trying my best to be the example. I'm trying to grow. But today it just got me and, and, I, and I lost it. But I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Hear me when I say this. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of between. But forget Stellar's b- between a kindergarten, a, a school, people's life. Depends on decisions I'm making. I, I got members who just had parents die, and I want to shout out Shante. We're praying with you, and as soon as I get back, that's the first stop I'm making. Uh, it's the Shante. She just lost her dad, and I talked to her today. She's like, Pastor, it's crazy. She was building a house for the ground up for her dad uh, with all type of uh, ramps and stuff to make him comfortable. Now he's passed. She's like, I'm just ready to get out this. It's a lot. So do you lower your vision to the level of your pain? Okay, so I want to do this deductively. Pastor Mike, how do I know I've lowered, how do I know I've made my pain bigger than my vision? It's when you say stuff like, I ain't trusting nobody else. 
I ain't loving nobody else. Aisha, this is good right here. You're not afraid of new love. You're afraid of old hurt. That's cold lane. When I saw you post that, I said, Jesus Christ, you're not afraid of new love. You're afraid of old hurt. Now, you're not afraid of getting in a relationship. You're still afraid of the relationship you got out of. Instead of looking at your entrance, you're still tripping over your exit. I be killing me. I, I be killing me. Somebody say pain. Look at verse 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez. Look how trifling this is. Because I bore him in pain. Giving birth to Jabez was so painful. She's so trifling. She named him pain. What if God named you what you do to him? Jesus. What if God named you what you cause him? Jesus. Jabez means sorrowful. Look at this. Grief or what? Pain. So we obviously see something about his birth. His birth was exceptionally more painful than the usual birth. So if we look at scriptures, let's always look deep. This lets me know something about his birth because we understand he's not the only child because it says he was more honorable than his brothers, which lets me know she done did this before. But it was something about this one that was so different. And scarred her so bad. Let's, let's deal with this. I try to think on every side. Either the pain was physical or emotional. Physical, she probably had to have the first ever C-section or it ripped her to shreds. Or it was emotional, her and the daddy weren't getting along. Either him coming out hurt or who put him in hurt. I don't think y'all heard what I just said. Either him coming out hurt or who put them in hurt? Because live long enough, two things are going to cause you pain. What you trying to birth and who you trying to birth it with. My God, I'm talking heavy if you receive it, which is why you have to do a proper inventory of your circle. Which is why I am calling everybody close to me, grow with me. I'm moving at warp speed. i never forget when Rock City took off. And I'm on the Word Network. I'm the youngest pastor in the country on the Word Network. I'm coming on right after Jamal Bryant, R. Ray Vernon. Everybody's calling me. I think I'm 29 at the time. Everybody's calling from across the world. My, my, my marriage probably wasn't in the place to handle me traveling. My kids was baby. The church was young. And Dr. Vernon looked at me and said, Mike, if you start taking these engagements now, you're going to lose everything. And because I was submitted, because I was submitted, I came off the Word Network. Y'all remember I put all my energy in being a better daddy, start coaching football, trying to be a better father, trying to be a better pastor, and boom, God began to bless. But I want to make this very clear. I'm not stopping this time. I'm not stopping this time. This is ordained by God. Because I was submitted in the last season, he's elevating in this season. I am not going to stop to cater to you because you're not growing at the speed you think you should grow. This is why you got to check your inventory. This is why, hear me, whenever you're giving birth, there are two people in the room, only one of them in pain. So in your relationship, there are going to be seasons where I'm going to have to stand there and say, push Hollis, push D, push Tip, push James. But then there are also going to be seasons where they're going to say, push PMJ, push PMJ. Can I help you real quickly? If you don't have somebody in the room pushing you, that may be the reason you're in so much pain. It's crazy, ain't it? I told my team today, I, 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 I texted him, I said, thank you for holding it down for me. Thank you for holding, thank you for pushing. <sighs> Jabez was more honorable. This is critical. Why? But I want you to know something. She names him Jabez because he caused her so much pain. Why would she do such a horrible thing like that? I'm so glad you asked. To let you know, please put this in your notes, birthing greatness isn't easy. Jesus. Birthing greatness isn't easy. Hear me when I say this. It is not easy to be great. I appreciate LeBron James on such another level now because I'm seeing my I'm seeing um Phoenix and the Bucks go to the finals and they are celebrating conference championships like it's the real championship. They had a whole party in Phoenix because they're not used to greatness. <laughs> Milwaukee got confetti, Hollis. I'm over here looking, I'm like, oh my God, they won the ship. No, that's just a conference. When LA did it, there was nothing. They looked at each other and said, there's more work to be done. 
You want to know why? Here it is. Because I'm, I'm going to see who's smart. I'm going to see who's smart. See who's smart. The Lakers got banners. What's a banner? It hangs in the ceiling as proof that we've done it before. And if he's done it before, we have created an expectation that this is the standard. What's the word that means God is my banner? Jehovah Nisi, God is my banner. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? That means when I step into battle, I raise Nisi as a sign to my enemy that he's conquered before and he will conquer again. When you got banners, you don't shout over average. When you have banners, you don't shout over average. This is the standard. Oh, I just got excited. This is the standard. I'm not going to celebrate you because you prayed this week. That's the standard. I'm not going to celebrate you because you came to rehearsal after a long day's work. That's the standard. I'm not going to celebrate you because, Pastor, I ain't do this. That's the standard. You in a ministry of greatness, and you come from a lineage of people who have overcome odds. You think it was easy having to walk during the bus boycott? That was the standard. And we become a generation that has settled for less than the standard. Y'all don't like me today. How do you know you're birthing greatness? Because you're always in pain. That's crazy, ain't it, H.J.? You always in pain. You always in pain. So, so hear me. Put this in your notes. Past, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, I have dual roles. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to summarize it, succinctly summarize it. My mind's leaving me. It's called syntax when everything comes together, right? Syntax. Leslie, that's syntax? Syntax. Okay, syntax. So syntax, when you hear preachers say uh, reliable, dependable, Forgettable. It's the abodes. It's called syntax. Oh, he say the pressure, the power, the problem. That's syntax to make it all work. All right. So I'm going to give you my resume with syntax. Okay. Um, I- I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm in charge of the leading, feeding, interceding, bleeding, leading, feeding, interceding, bleeding. I can do that. I feel like it's another one on there, but I it hit me and I may add it later. Leading, I'm going to make sure I help you get to where God is calling you. Feeding, I'm going to try to give you all the word I can. Now, let me show you what's cold. Who's been on devotion? Don't devotion be getting off? Y'all killed it this morning. I love when y'all on there, especially when y'all be having Roy on there. Y'all be going for it. And y'all got so tight, y'all be playing clips. I saw you. Deanna said, well, before we go to the next shot, let me play this clip. I like clipped. All of a sudden, I saw me and what God desires to do. I said, y'all the spiritual ESP in this joint, boy. Y'all got highlight tapes and everything. But I, this is what God blessed me with. So if you're on a devotion and I'm not on there, I'm still on there. Because yeah. yeah. God said, Mike, sometimes, sometimes you Benihana's or you Kobe's, you cooking in front of them on Sunday. But then sometimes Monday through Friday, you the sous chef in the back preparing it and they just bring it out. Yeah. I, I feed. I, I raise up feeders. I got dogs on my squad. I'm speaking by faith that some of these young guns finna go change the world. Feeding. A leading, feeding, bleeding. It's my job to let you just bleed all over me sometimes. It's my job sometimes that those who are close to me, I just let them take it out on me. Their frustration isn't really with me. It's really with their assignment or with what they're going through or with what they're dealing with at home or with what they're dealing with on their personal life. But it's my job to say, you know what? I can take that. Reading is my job to read. That's something I got to be better at, be an avid reader, because if you're not reading, you're not growing mentally. Did you catch that? So one of my assignments is to be a midwife. It's to be a midwife. It's to help you give birth to something and let you know that it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. You want to be an evangelist? evangelist? I love you, Colleen. That's my cousin, and, and she doesn't get a lot because she's my cousin. She should have been praying and preaching at the church more, but because she's my cousin, I won't let her. Ask me why. Because since you're so close, you're going to have to earn it. So nobody will ever say, well, he let him do that. He let her do that because that's her cousin, his cousin. No. Get up in the morning, get on prayer. Go on the back of the house and do this. Serve here. Now I'm like, no, it's your time now, baby girl. Do your thing. It's time for you to walk in it. It's, but I need you to understand, as we release this anointing, and now you're getting all these engagements to come preach places, get ready for the pain. You don't get the platform without the pain. 
You don't get the platform without the pain. Now that the world is opening up and Tristan, the prophetic gift that's on your life, and now people are going to start running to you, did God show you anything about me? Pain comes with that. Pain comes with that. I was watching a movie the other day, and they would get visions. But every time it was on Netflix, they would get a vision. It hurt. I think it was called Manifest. On Netflix, um, Manifest, Manifest, please send me a check for endorsing your movie. Man, I was watching Manifest, and every time it, ah, ah, it, it would hurt. And when I saw that, I said, oh, my God, look at purpose. Look at purpose. Because every time I give you a word for them, it may hurt you. Birthing greatness is painful. I want to help you. I want to help you because look at what it says. God gives us 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 4 is so cold-blooded because God gives us 600 genealogies in Chronicles. Chronicle, chronological Chronicles, first, second Chronicles is nothing more than a, 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 a family tree. And this person was the father of this person. They had seven babies. And the name was boom, 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 boom. And this person was the next. So if you ever want to know who comes from who, go to Chronicles. 600 genealogies. Think about this. 600 names. I'm sorry, not names. Families. So if it's 600 families, and let's say each one got seven kids, you do the math. So look how boring Chronicles is. It would literally say, and Michael gave birth to Xander, Michael, Mason, McKinley, Miles. And Xander gave birth to Xander Jr., Michael IV. So, and Michael IV gave birth to Michael IV. Then they got to go back and get the other son. But then Michael III son was so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. They do this all the way through First Chronicles. Then out of nowhere, Jabez gets his own story. Did you catch that? They go to list the names. Go back to the first verse, Leslie. Let them see it. If you look at the first verse, it literally says right here, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, Sam, because I bore him in pain. Out of nowhere, they list names, 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 names. But Jabez... He was more honorable than everybody else. Suddenly, Jabez rises above the rest, and God gives him two verses in the whole book. Two verses, two being the number of agreement and witness. He says, look at this so you can come into agreement that birth and pain is, birth and greatness is painful. But then let me be a witness that if you endure the pain, you get your borders enlarged. It is agreement and witness. Look at what happens right here. He says, Jabez was more honorable. Now, before we exegetically unpack this passage, let's examine Jabez. Jabez is a descendant of Judah. Judah (laughs) translates to mean praise. Now, here's what's critical. Jabez is from praise, but we know him from prayer. Remember, what's the prayer of Jabez? Bless me, bless me indeed, oh Lord, bless me indeed, enlarge my text. So he's from Judah, which is praise, but he's known for prayer. Why is that important? Because if you're going to be successful, you got to be ambidextrous. You got to have praise and prayer. Why, Pastor Mike? Because praise will get you the blessing. Prayer will teach you how to keep the blessing. Live long. If all you want to do is shout, you're going to get some stuff robbed. I was so excited in Houston this week. And, and shout out to everybody watching from Houston. Dre, do me a favor. Throw that picture on the screen real quickly. Look at that. You see that picture? Now show the video. Show the video. Show the video. Do y'all see that right there? I'm in Houston. And I'm in a store getting some clothes to wear for a performance we had. And a lady hears me talking and says, oh, my God, the voice. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know the song? She said, no, you my pastor. She said, I watch devotion every day. I'm on church every day. Oh, my God. And I gave her the biggest hug. That's her right there. I gave her the biggest hug. It was her son's birthday. So I bought him a shirt. So then I go out the store. She riding down the street playing grateful. Early in the morning when I rise. Do me a favor. Commercial break. Show, show a little bit of the music video, please. Early in the morning when I rise, yeah. Ride my heart and look up to the sky, yeah. Thanking my God that I'm still alive, yeah. I'm grateful. That, see, she's doing all that in the car, right? She's doing all that in the car. Uh, available on iTunes and Spotify right now. So she's doing all of that in the car. And then we go in H&M. And then Steven said, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, them people is literally like, hey, I know them. I know them. And I'm sitting here now tripping in my mind like, God, God, praise. If all I want to do is shout, I'm in trouble. You want to know why? I'm now so happy. 
That I'm walking around Houston now like, man, who else know? I'm looking at people who don't even know me. Aisha, I'm walking through Houston now like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm in the restaurant trying to talk loud. Man, you know, God is good. Anybody know the voice? Because I'm trying to see who know me out in these streets. You got me? But then I get back to my room and my debit card's missing. And I'm like, oh, my God, where's my debit card? Where's my debit card? I can't find my debit card. Then the dealer says, hey, I was walking back. Why was your debit card on the ground by H&M? That is the picture of only having praise. If you are so consumed with praise, you lose what's valuable. (laughs) Prayer. See, praise says, thank you, Jesus. Stop. See, praise says, thank you, Jesus. Prayer says, stop. Prayer says, God, I know you can do it. Prayer, but God, even if you don't. This is why the three Hebrew boys are in the fiery furnace because they wouldn't praise the way the enemy said praise. But what keeps them in the fiery furnace? Prayer. Even if you don't. That wasn't just a statement. That was a prayer. God, they never said amen. Sometimes you ain't got time to say amen. You just got to speak those things that are not as though they were. So hear me when I say this. It says Jabez. I want to stop, Dre. I've been going a long time. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Why? He was more honorable. Let's talk about that and I'm going to get out of here. He was more honorable. It was not until I did an extensive word study on the word honor that I got the picture. Honor translates to mean kabod. Kabod in a bad sense is burdensome, severe, dull. In a good sense, it is numerous, rich, honorable to cause or to make weighty. So kabod is glory. Mm, I get it now. He, he's more honorable because he carried more. Jesus. He's more honorable because he carried more weight than everyone. The more weight you carry, the more opportunity for God to get the glory. So because of this, he walked with the kabod. You spell it, Pastor Mike. K-A-W dash B-A-D-E. Kabod. He walked with the kabod or the glory on him. And can I suggest to you that the reason God keeps adding weight to you is because he's trying to approve you for glory? Heck, I may be in the wrong church, but who wants some glory on your life? I just don't want God in me. I want God on me. See, anointing mean God is in me. Glory mean God's on me. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Then he says, and I think I'm going to stop right there because we know this. I don't want to play games. Kings don't clown and clowns don't become kings. Let's look at what happens right here. He says, bless me. Hmm. Indeed, Jabez blesses my soul with this prayer because he sets the tone in the beginning by not just asking God for an average blessing. See, I come full circle. He said, bless me big. Indeed, the true essence of a blessing gets watered down to something vague or bland. See, a blessing ain't have a nice day. A blessing ain't what you drive. No, this is no wonder why so many Christians aren't as hungry as Jabez to receive the blessing. To bless in a biblical sense means to ask for or to impart supernatural favor. See, see, this is why it is so so to the bless is to put a stamp of approval on something to where it is now supernatural. I am natural. If God blesses me, he places his super on my neck. Jabez has the faith and the audacity to ask God to bless me indeed. In the Hebrew, adding indeed to this prayer was like adding five exclamation points or writing it in bold letters. In other words, he said, bless me Indeed, this is an emergency. Now, I want to show you what's cold-blooded. He says, bless me indeed, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. It's not in the text, but it's implied. The bless me indeed is imperative. You bless me. Indeed. Then look what he says, enlarge my territory. Keep your hand on me. He puts the emphasis on the blessing, not the stuff. Blessing. I, I want to pronounce a blessing over it. Blessing means to speak well of. Yeah. Keep, keep speaking well of me, yeah. even if you don't enlarge. Yeah. Okay, this, this cold blooded. This, 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 this cold blooded. This cold blooded. I needed something done. I needed something done. Uh, and, and everybody kept telling me it wasn't going to get done. Okay, it wasn't going to get done. I, I, I make the call. I make the call. And I'm on the phone extremely nervous. All right. Because everybody's telling me just don't even get your hopes up. I get on the phone. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing so and so, so and so, so and so. Yeah, they told me to expect your call. All right. As soon as they said that, 
the fear in me or the past tormenting me almost said, just hang up, don't even worry about it, it's already done. They said, no, man, we're already prepared for you. Have your people come by, sign so-and-so, so-and-so, we can get so-and-so done, yada, yada, man, thank you, sir. Do you know X, Y, Z? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, man, that's my cousin. You guys did a giveaway and brought boxes of food and so-and-so, so-and-so. I went over there for the fourth, and everybody was talking about church, and yada, yada, they started talking about you. I had no idea you've been doing all this stuff for my family. Bless me indeed. Wow. Hear me when I say this. In other words, keep, keep putting my name in rooms. My feet ain't touched. I don't think you heard what I just said. And I'm at a place in my life now that if I never get the S550, bless me indeed. If I never get 20 bedrooms, bless me indeed. Never 20 million in the bank, bless me indeed. But don't just bless me indeed. I feel like having a little church in large. Yee, my territory or this particular version of the Bible says border. Now, now, the old me would have preached territory because it was popular. The old me would have preached territory because it's popular, but I need border because territory is too vague for me. See, territory says God enlarged this room. No, border by, by definition is when I'm feeling constrained or stuck. Because you can have a lot of stuff, but still feel stuck. So, so hear me, whenever I feel stuck, enlarge my borders. Watch this, enlarge, put this in your notes, my influence. Okay, De Deanna, Deanna, we, we, we believe by faith you're going to hold major offices in this country, right? You, you, you black magic walking, black magic walking. We're going to go ahead and speak that. When it's time for you to run, I'm going to cut checks and everybody's going to be helping you personally. We're going to make sure we pray over you. But let me free you. Let me, let me free you. you. Let me free you. Let me free you. So to enlarge my border means, this is cold-blooded. Are you ready for this? It means if I'm over District 1. Is my cousin over District 1? All right. So Clint Woods, shout out Clint Woods, member of Rock City Church. Shout out all you did with Huffman. Uh, and shout out to Huffman for winning the championship. He took them all to the stadium. I love you, man. Shout out to Huffman, all of you guys. We want to celebrate you guys. But here's what I love so much about him. As influential as he is, his borders are District 1. Mm -hmm. His border is District 1, which means he can walk around District 1 and say, I need this fix. I need that fix. But if he step an inch over District 1, District 2 going to look at him and say, keep that over there. Keep that over there. So in other words, when I say enlarge my border, that means increase my capacity. So, so let me free you. Let me free you. So if this is my border and God enlarges my border, he just enlarged my influence. Michael, enlarge my responsibility. See, we want to shout, enlarge my responsibility. Enlarge my responsibility. I'll take that. That's why I'm so quickly to repent and apologize. I'm not perfect by a long shot. I'm not perfect by a long shot, but nobody's ever going to beat me at repenting. Nobody. I swallow pride quickly because I've been enclosed. I believe whenever you step outside the will of God with no repentance and no remorse, because see, it ain't, see, I hope y'all take this the right way. Please take this the right way. All sin, that just means you're weak. When you sin and don't even care or have a conscience that God is not pleased, that means you're wicked. So most of us are weak. We make mistakes. We fall down. God, I can't help who I love. I can't help what I did. I tried my best. I made a mistake. I was weak. I am not wicked like God. You, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do what I want to do. Now, that, that ain't what we are. But here's what happened is I think when you step over to a reprobate mind, reprobate, it literally, I believe God encloses you. All right, when you go to prison, what's the worst part about prison? They decrease your borders. They take you from a thousand square feet home to a 200 square feet box. And prison is so miserable because there is no enlarging. And for many of you, let's talk about borders. Are you listening to me? Borders, gabal. Gabal, properly a cord, i.e. a boundary by extension of the territory. Here's the word I want. It's right there on your screen. Limit. So let's exchange border and territory with limit. So God enlarge my. All right, I'm, I'm going to have church by myself. 
Finna have church by myself. If you don't shout with me right here, I would hoop, but I ain't got no keyboard player with me. Here, 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 here it is. I'm tripping the other day, Deanna. I'm tripping, and I, I'm trying to get something to eat, and I got my little Capital One credit card with me, right? And I checked my online Capital, Capital One credit card, and I was like $20 right next to my limit, okay? But I'm like, okay, cool. Forget that. I'm here. Let's see if it go through, all right? So then I go in the restaurant. Boom, pull that joint out. Boom, $19, it's boom, it did what it did. I forgot I had another payment coming out, all right? So then all of a sudden, I get an email. Email said, uh, Michael D. McClure, you have exceeded hmm, your limit, but due to good payment, we are increasing. All right, so, so I go back on there, I go back on there, and I'm like, oh, see, I'm hood. I'm hood now. You know what time it is now. I'm like, look at God done increase my limit. See, see, I, I, what if I told you, you praying for stuff you haven't got an increasement for? So I don't have to ask for more money. All I got to do is say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, increase my limit. Increase my limit. Can I prophesy and speak over your life? This is going to be the year your limit get increased. That he's increasing the capacity of what you can hold, what you can handle, what you can manage. Somebody out of type, increase. All right, I grew up, I grew up, I grew up old school where you didn't leave house without ironing. All right, and, and I don't know about y'all because we don't really iron in this generation properly, okay? Because everything is so tight fit. My daddy didn't have baggy church pants, and he said, Mike, if you're going to iron, you got to put a crease in it. All right, and so, so the crease, the, the crease meant that in the pants, there was a, 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 a distinct point that says it is, boom, crease. So, so when I think increase, to put in a crease is a distinct mark that says this has been processed, it has been prepared, and it is fit to be seen. See, increase is not just so you can stunt. Increase is more internal than external. See, having million do- a million dollars externally is the proof that you did some right, some right internally. This is why most millionaires you look at, you can't tell they're rich. They're too busy building what's on the inside versus flexing what's on. Let, let's go. I got to stop. So in other words, put this in your notes. En- enlarge my territory. Whenever I'm feeling stuck, give me more room. Mm. Give me more room. That's critical, right? Give me more room. First Chronicles 4 and 10, and that your hand might be on me. Jabez value God's presence over presence. Dre, put that on the screen. I think they missed it. Presence. You see that P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E versus presence, P-R-E. You see that gifts. Jabez honored the giver more than the gifts. Did you catch that? He valued that the hand, which is the yod, the hand, which is the yod, a primitive word, hand, the open one, power, direction. When, when, when I'm walking through the store with Miles, y'all know Miles, he's only four. He'll be all over the place. And I'm not going to, he don't want to be in the stroller because he can walk now. He want to be in the, in, the, in the buggy. He walked. So I literally walked uh, a, AP with my hand on his head. I, I, wish he, I wish he was here. I literally put my hand on his head and be walking through the store. And I'm literally turning his body with his head because he, he's immature. So if he see toys here, he go where his eyes go. He go where his eyes go. So when he's walking through a store, even though I'm walking in mission and purpose, he's looking for entertainment. So, so I have to literally take his body because his eyes don't move. The hand moves. I have to guide him. That is called direction. This is why any good racehorse only operates with blinders. Because if I let them see too much, they'll go the wrong way. Some of us are in pain because we've seen too much. Too much. So Jabez says, keep your hand on me. Jesus. That is power. That is means. That is direction. That's why this week at the Stellas, and to all of you who just joined in, uh, I'm preparing for the Stellas, and we've been in rehearsal for the last five, six hours, so please don't judge what I got on. I love my ministry so much. I wanted to stop, and what I was in, we rent this ballroom, and we just I wanted to stop and just preach to you. That's how much it means to me to get a word to you every week, and I want to prove the devil, naysayers, and those doubters who keep leaking stuff that Pastor Mike going to blow up in music and forget his church. Forget that. I am called to God, and because I'm called to God, whenever he wants to get a word to his 
his people through me. He does it through words and music. And I believe I can be blessed at both of them. I'm committed to being blessed at both of them. But what I'm discovering, too, is the hand is so important. The hand is so important. Because look at this. I want to I make sure you catch this. Make sure you catch this. Power means direction. The reason I'm trying my best to do so well musically is because I have Curtis Glenn, I, I have Amanda, I have Adia, I have a Terrell, I have a Steven, I have all of those who have musical aspirations who are connected to me, Deanna, and I want to make sure that when my hand is on them, it means something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jay Fortune, this is so crazy. Uh, I was talking to James the other day, and, and I, I don't think he gets enough credit for who his hand has been on. In a sense of when you look at a Ty Galbraith who was singing background behind him, and James financed the entire project for him to do Lord, You're Good, his hand was on him. When you look at a Mignon who was singing behind him, now she's known nationwide, that was the fire hand. When you look at a Josiah Martin, when you look at a Zacardi Cortez, who literally became famous singing with him. The hand was on him. Deshaun's hand was on him. You can even say me because a lot of places I went early in my career, they didn't invite me. They never invited me. Nobody knew me. They would give him 15 minutes. He would say, those are my 15 minutes. Yeah, he would do favor, give me four minutes in the middle, then do I am at the end. The hand meant something. So what I'm realizing now is with those who are coming behind me, I want to make sure when they say, hey, now I've been singing with Pastor Mike. Oh, that means something. That means something. Wherever God blesses Hollis to go, whether it's Tuscaloosa or Mobile or, 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 or Houston or Nashville or California, we never know what God is going to do. It's my prayer that I could keep him bottled up, but that would be immaturity. He's too gifted to just be behind me for the rest of his life. And it's not just because he's gifted. There's a unique calling on his life and an assignment to which God wants to fulfill through him. I got to make sure when that day comes, the hand means something. That if I step in Mobile and say, God bless you, Mobile, Pastor Mike Jr. here, this is my beloved. And Mobile, no. Oh, this is going to be legit. This is going to be legit. The hand on me. With Refocus Group, I'm teaching Refocus and I love all my shout out to everybody in Refocus. But my brother's unique call in this content creation. He loves information for everybody in focus group. You know this. He does one-on-ones. He does the, 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 the champion group, the intensives. I'll be coming to the office. I almost had to move his office about a month ago because literally I'm in my office trying to write a sermon. All I hear him saying is, what you got to do is if your mind don't come out the way the mind comes and the perpetual pregnancy of the father, I'm like, I, I'm banging on the wall. Shut up. I'm trying to do a news interview. He come in there, got these intentions, dog. He comes to my house. We trying to have family time. Everybody swimming in the swimming pool. The kids having fun. All of a sudden, where's your laptop at? I got to get my intentions in. I was like, bro, you do intensive for me. That's his passion. So you know what I said? I'm going to create an avenue the way he can do everything he needs to do. So when I stand before Refocus Group and say, hey, y'all, God bless y'all. This next season, I'm getting ready to do so-and-so. Something. Pastor Darius is doing his first ever so-and-so. The hand means something. Yeah. Every parent ought to live your life in a way that when kids raised and they say the last name, it means something. Ah, yeah. oh, let's go home. He says that you would keep me from harm, that it may not harm me. Pain from others or pain from his own sin could lay treacherous hurt in the life of Jabez. He prayed that God would guard his life. He says right here in verse 10, he says that your hand might be with me, that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. Look, look, look at that. That's cold blooded. He says, I need your hand on my life to keep me from harm so it won't pain me. Now, most people miss that, Terrell. Stephen, they miss that. In other words, he says, I know it's going to hurt me, but don't let it cause me pain. Because every hit don't cause pain. I believe, I believe, look at this. Somebody put in your notes. I'm going home. Put hurt. Put pain. Put hurt and put pain. I'm going to say hurt is physical. Pain is internal. I can hurt myself physically. The pain is what I feel internally. <laughs> Which is why when you go to the doctor, they say, what's your level of pain? Then they say, show me where it hurts. What's the level of what you're taking? Now show me where it hurts. And the problem with many of you is that when I ask you what's the pain, you tell me the location. Pain is not location. Hurt is location. Knee, finger, wrist, ankle, head, arm, chest. Pain is a level. It's another level of interpretation 
of what you're trying to profess. So, so Aisha, when I say, tell me what hurts, that's when you say, Pastor, my heart. Sometimes when I say what hurt, that's when you say my mind. Tell me the location. Because if you tell me the location, then I can help. The problem with so many of my spiritual sons and daughters is you take me from being an MD to a veterinarian. See, an MD, I can ask you where it hurt. You tell me. A vet, I got to keep poking till I find it. They can't talk. And I told you in the beginning of the message, an allergic reaction impacts your <coughs> voice. And whenever you become voiceless, I then have to keep digging. So now you run from me because since you ain't mature enough to verbalize it, I end up cutting in areas that never should have been cut. So now you think I'm abusive when you were too immature to speak. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to discern what you could tell me. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. It, this is too much. He, he says, keep me from, watch this, look what he says. He says, keep me from harm that it may not pay me. I'm going to get hit. I can go down here to Stella's and fall flat on my face. I can. You know what I say, God? Just keep it from painting me. Keep it from painting me. For so many years, what the rumors and what people would say about me and the negative reports, it, it pained me and it affected me. See, pain clouds your mind and your vision. Claim will have pain will have you not believe in you who God called you to be. Pain will have you acting like what you think will not cause you pain. Y'all yeah. remember when I was wearing all them suits and ain't nothing wrong with a suit. I just had a suit on last week. I'm going to just wear what I feel. But I never forget when I was younger, I was wearing full blown suits and big rings, big ties, trying my best to look older, wearing glasses. I was so, because it was like, no, he's too young. So I was like, maybe if I look old, they'll like me. Then they said he looked fake. Th then I realized I will never be me trying to be what they see me as. Yeah. I got to go. And God granted him, let's go home, his request. And God, that can preach, granted him his request. Many of us are inspired by Jabez and his prayer. But the truth is that I've tried so many times in my life to pray like that, but didn't get the results. That's cold-blooded. I never got the results. Why, PMJ? And I want to submit to you. I want to submit to you. I want to submit to you that many of us are dealing with the pain of unanswered prayers. Pain of unanswered prayers. Pastor Mike, I prayed for a man like so and so, so and so, so and so, so, and it didn't. That's, there's a pain to unanswered prayers. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mike, I, I thought my career would be for. There's a pain of unanswered prayers. I know I'm gifted, man, but God dang, it's the praying, pain of dang. There's the pain of unanswered prayers. You know, I mean, faithful as I am, I helped everybody with their campaign and did everything. I live right. I give. I sow. It's the pain of unanswered prayers. What do I do when God increases my limit to the point of what I wanted? What do I do when he puts me on the doorstep of the blessing and says, but not yet? What do I do when I have to celebrate somebody, get what I pray for? It's the pain of unanswered prayers. Three reasons for unanswered prayers when we're going home. Number one, I don't ask. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. James 4 and 2 says, You do not have because you do not ask God. So the first reason prayers don't get answered is because you don't ask. Number two, we're desperate for the wrong things. James 4 and 3. James 4 and 3. All right, so I want to, I'm going to read James, Leslie, I'm going to read James 4 and 2, then go into James 4 and 3 so they can see how it comes together. Look at this. You do not have because you do not ask God. Look at verse 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. That's crazy, Terrell. It's asking with the wrong motives. You want to know why I think God blessed me so much musically? Because he know he can trust me. I really believe that. I'm not the best singer. Y'all know that. I'm not the best singer. Y'all done heard me crack on many of Sundays. And I be going for it. I'm not the best singer. I'm not the most handsome. Not the most gifted. I don't have the best songs in the world. There are people who are way better than me. I believe God knows he can trust me. I believe, just like this past weekend, we had to perform on the only gospel act in Houston, Texas. Literally at a rap hip-hop event. It's weed, smoking, twerking, and dancing robots. 
the robots are 12 feet tall, giant dancing robots who just dancing, doing everything. And I'm just standing there like, whoa, what's going on? Then they look at me after all of that. Cupid was there. Down, down, do you down, down. He there, everybody there, okay? Then all of a sudden they look at me and say, all right, Pastor Mike, let's go. Me, Stephen, and did we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, God. We walked on stage. Let me show you. Everybody converged to the stage. By the time we threw, with a blunt in his hand, <laughs> with, with Crown Royal right here, <laughs> Daisy Dukes, hands lifted. Then I get to the end, you know what I said to the end? Before I leave, I want to say, maybe you don't know Jesus. God know he can trust me. Hear me when I say this from the depths of my soul, he can trust me. He trusts me. Even when it comes down to the church, I could be the most selfish pastor in the face of the planet. But yet, how many times do you see me create a platform for a Pastor Hollis, a Pastor D? What black pastor, you know, in his early years who had even reached his pinnacle yet will stop and say, Pastor Curtis, start yours. We'll pay for everything. You stack your money. You preach. We're going to help you become every. God know he can trust me. And what I'm discovering now is you got to act with the right motives. He says the wrong motives. What is the proof of the wrong motives? That you may spend it on what your pleasures are. So I want a music career that's going to blow up so I can buy. I want to get this promotion so I can. And God is sitting back like, what that got to do with me? I thought I said, let your light shine so that men may see your good works. And in return, number three, we're going home, double mindedness. Prayers don't, I believe there are three reasons for unanswered prayers. Number one, you don't ask. Number two, you're desperate for the wrong things. I'm going to add a fourth one. Number three, double-mindedness. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Look at verse seven. The person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So we use stuff out of context. So man, we say when a person doing too much stuff he double minded no double minded specifically was for somebody who was praying for something they didn't believe they could get nope so let's do this number one thank you so much for playing Rod number one we don't ask number two desperate for the wrong things number three double mindedness number four it's just not God's will for your life cause you can have the right motives believe and ask and God still say no it is, to, it is better to have prayer. It is better in prayer to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Prayer is the encounter of God's thirst with ours. God thirsts that we may thirst for. Damn. Did you get anything out of that today? Yeah. Clap your hands if you're looking at me, man. Look at me. Look at me. I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. So I want to say thank you. And I mean this from the depths of my soul, Rock City. I want to pause and just literally say thank you, Rock City. I mean this from the bottom of my heart, man. Everything I am and everything I ever be. Number one, it's because of the glory of God. Number two, it's because I had parents who loved me enough to train me in the ways of God versus the world. But then number three, I got a church who got my back. I mean this from the bottom of my heart, from the depths of my soul. I'm going to forever give y'all everything I got. I mean this. This is why I go as hard as I do because I don't take it for granted. A leader with no followers is just taking a walk. And a pastor with no team is just a preacher. So what I understand is everything I am is because of the people that God has blessed me to and those who helped me serve. So I just want to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I mean, and Stellas don't change that. Accolades don't change that. Fame does not change that. Opportunity does not change that. What matters most to me is being what God has called me to be. And I just want to pause and just say again, thank you. Um, you guys loved me when I was young and immature. You loved me when I was trying to figure out who I was as a man. And you loving me now. I have so many people who call me and say, you know your church gonna leave you because they don't want a pastor who's doing all this singing and all that. Well, for those who don't want that, God bless you. But for those of you who have supported me, I've got nothing but positivity from my church. Pastor Mike, go do that. So many times I've prayed that God would do stuff in your life and when God did it, I celebrated with you. I'm grateful I got people who are celebrating with me. So I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I am so, 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 so 
so grateful for all that God has done. The Stella that we won this time was so incredible. I just really believe that God's doing some incredible things. And I mean this, man. I speak by faith that what God did in my life, he's going to do in your life. Exceeding and abundant above all we could ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to all of you. And do me a favor today. If you're paying your tithes, pay your tithes. But if you're giving an offering today, don't give your offering to the church, please. I want you to help my school. I'm attempting to do something that everybody professionally is telling me will not work. There is no black-owned kindergarten through 12th grade fully accredited school, Christian school in the state of Alabama. Your pastor had the only fully accredited black owned K through 12 in the state of Alabama because we just didn't get the support we normally have because scholarships were taken from us nationally and locally. I had to close my ninth through 12th grade. We are working with, through plans now to where our 12th graders will be able to finish their last year at the school. But I want to just come back and say this boldly. I almost felt somewhat of a coward spirit on me because I allowed the facts to tell me I couldn't do it and I never stood before my church in faith and say we can do this. So do me a favor, over the next seven days, I am attempting to raise close to $100,000. That is not a lot of money when we all come together and be what God called us to be. I would love personally, and if you're giving an offering today, do not give it to the church. I want you to text SOAR. I want you to text SOAR. Text SOAR. It's right there on your screen to 28950. Whatever offering you're giving, give it to the church, please. I'm sorry, to the school, please. I want to be able to call my principal and say, hey, call the parents of our high school and let them know it's back on. I would love to do that. But I share the sentiments of the three Hebrew boys. Even if we don't, I know God is able. So I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be me, allowing us to be all that God is calling us to be. And I believe that the best is yet to come. Maybe somebody needs prayer. Click that link right there. Our team in the chat, they're waiting to pray with you. Well, they're going to pray with you uh, literally virtually online. If you click the link, all my elders are right there on a Zoom call and they will pray with you individually in the own room. That way you can get some person, um, private, personal, a personal touch and it'll bless your life. So I love you. I'm praying for you. I cannot wait to see you guys. We are working through our return schedule now. What that will look like. Y'all pray for your pastor. I do not want to go back to preach 55 times a week uh, so we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with that but I promise you man we are working our way back do me a favor in the comment type uh, a palm tree type a beach type something that represents vacation because all y'all gone somewhere anyway don't be rushing me to come back to church and you ain't even much gonna be there so hear me real quick somebody on the beach right now I prophesy who on the beach type me right now if you on the beach right now y'all watching me cooking food tell me some pastor when we coming back to church Give me some time. I'm looking around September coming back, and I'm excited about that. So, man, we're working through some things now. I'm fixing some stuff in Forestdale, trying to find some property, some more things. I want to be very wise and very smart on what God is doing. I love you. I'm praying for you. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. In Jesus' name, I'll holler.